Hello, this is Vampire here with yet another video on Generations Armada Megatron. Uh, there's already a ton of videos on YouTube already about this guy. And uh, yeah, I think almost all of them are reviews. People just uh, doing excellent jobs reviewing this figure. And in this video, I want to take it in a completely different tangent and just talk about why I like this figure so much and uh, just take it from there. So first off, uh, Count Stankus said something like he's not really into Transformers because, uh, you know, it, it, he said the transformation process, it just, it just seems like a lot of work. I think that was his point. And, and I completely understand. I mean, from one point of view, you can say that a Transformers toy, you're getting a robot and then you're getting the alt mode. So it's like you're getting two toys in one. That sounds like a great deal. But because of the gimmick, because of the transformation gimmick, it could just open a can of worms. Uh, you could end up with a crappy robot, a crappy alt mode, or even worse, crappy in both modes. Um, maybe the robot's cool, and maybe the alt mode is, is also cool, but then the transformation process could be a real pain. Sometimes the transformation is... It, it definitely can feel like a whole lot of work, or because the transformation is so complex, it ends up making the figure very, very flimsy. I mean, there's a whole lot of problems there, you know. Uh, but this one, this is one where I have to say that because they made his transformation process, even on the box it says something like 15 steps. They really, really toned it down, especially for a figure this size. They could have easily made it like another master class, or even just a leader class where it, where it takes a whole lot of steps to transform this guy and they're kind of like showing off what they could do but it it can really become irritating you know you just want to pose it a certain way and then once in a while you just want to change it and pose it in its old form or you know display it in a different way and and uh, yeah it, it could just be a real real big pain and sometimes you forget if you have multiple transfer transformers you could totally forget and it's like how does this go again and if you don't remember it could be very very frustrating this one uh, because it's 15 steps, hopefully that's not going to happen to me. Uh, it is still a little bit complex, but once you kind of like practice and get the hang of it, hopefully it's like riding a bicycle and, and it's not going to be a big deal at all. Uh, he's not flimsy, as you can see. Uh, he could. What I like is he really, really acts like one of those old school G1 Transformers where he look very, very stiff. Very, very stiff. And, and look at this, the way he's holding the gun and stuff. He looks like he has like no articulation. I like that. I like that. But then he does have a ton of articulation. If you watch the other uh, videos, you'll see that he's quite posable. I personally just like posing him like this. But, you know, once in a while, I'll, I'll put him like in a more action pose. And it's very cool that you can do that. Even when I went to Walmart today and I saw a ton of this guy just, just there. Honestly, I didn't see a single, uh, the G1 version, which is the exact same toy, just uh, based off of the G1 Megatron, so the head sculpt is different, colors are, are different. Other than that, exactly the same, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I didn't see any of the G1 versions, but I saw a ton of this guy, and that just kind of like, it just made me like almost laugh, because I think the people are missing out you know, with the G1 Megatron, he does look good. He does. He does. He definitely does. But it's like, how many versions of the G1 Megatron are there? This guy is very, very unique. And when I look back on the different Megatrons that have been released, which one do I personally like, right? And I think about the G1 Megatron, and I like it just because it's a G1 Megatron. But then when I really think about it, what do I really like about it? Sure, the cartoons, they were, they were cool and everything as a kid. You know, if I watch them now, I'm not sure how much I would like the cartoons. But the Transformers Marvel Comics, the UK uh, storylines, to me, that Megatron, the character, is really, really awesome. A lot of the characters in, in that comic book is actually very, very cool. And... Uh, that is what I like about the G1 Megatron. The toy, to me, honestly, is an absolute failure. It, he looks terrible. It doesn't look like the cartoon. And then when they started making the cartoon-looking uh, figure, um, 
his head sculpt to me is just not as cool as this one right here. This is a phenomenal head sculpt. I really, really like this head sculpt. I, I think they did a great job here. Um, I believe this is an improvement over the Armada head sculpt. This is a very cool... He looks evil because, you know, the red eyes, the, the purple metallic face. He looks evil, but the red horns also bring out, like, this devilish demon-like face. Very, very sweet. Uh, on the original Armada toy, he still looks cool, but the horns are way, way, way big out of proportion. Whereas this one, this looks good, although now we lose the function of the horns. But uh, I think it was a good trade-off. I, I really like it. I, I really do. When I compare the G1 uh, Megatron with the G1 Optimus Prime, it was it was always a little bit uh, disheartening because I, I tend to like the, the villains. I tend to like the bad guys. So like with G.I. Joe, I like Cobra. I, in Star Wars, I like the Empire. You know, I like the bad guys. In Transformers, of course, I like the Decepticons. But when I looked at the toys... I always thought, even though I didn't, I don't really care for Optimus Prime. Two things that I felt like he kind of had an advantage over Megatron. Number one is his name. His name is awesome. Optimus Prime is a freaking cool name. That is a badass name, folks. And then number two, his his face sculpt, his head sculpt, I thought was way cooler than Megatron. Uh, Megatron's head sculpt. Uh, I'm sorry, I still do. I I still think that's a better head sculpt until this. This one I am satisfied with. I I can say that I like this head sculpt better than Optimus Prime. The G1 Optimus Prime to me is an awesome head sculpt. And this one I can say that I actually like it better. So I'm immensely satisfied right there. And um, one of the things here is I, I want to point out is that, yes, the G1 Megatron, I like him. But it's really because of the character, not the toy. Armada Megatron, I like the toy. ton of gimmicks and stuff. But then now we got this one, I like it even more now. So I, I, I do like the Armada Megatron because back in the day I was into all the Minicons and I was I was into all that, I was into the show. I didn't have Armada Megatron, but to me it was still cool. Very, very cool. One of my favorite Megatrons. But now in this version, absolutely one of my top favorite Megatrons for sure. Uh, the third one I have to say is uh, definitely not the Cybertron Batmobile, the giant Batmobile Megatron. Oh, that is terrible. That is terrible. And then in Energon, he's a spaceship. Looks kind of cool. Makes me think more of Galvatron. I wish they had named him Galvatron. But, you know, there's something very satisfying to see Megatron as a tank because of his fusion cannon, because of the firepower. It's just very, very satisfying. Pretty much any Megatron toy where he's a tank, I like the looks, period, already. Even if the toy sucks, even if the transformation sucks, even if it looks bad, just the fact that he transforms into a tank, I give him plus. I give any Megatron that does that a plus. The other Megatron I have to say that was solid figure and character is Beast Wars Megatron, that purple T-Rex. Yes, just giving Barney a run for its money. I got to say, that was very, very sweet and very ironic that he's a purple T-Rex and Barney's a purple T-Rex and, you know, whatnot. So, uh, because he's like this menacing, he had a great, that Megatron had a great voice, sounded extremely ruthless and intelligent. And he was, the character was. So, very, very sweet. So, Anyway, those are my top three Megatrons, and toy-wise, I have to give it to Armada and the uh, Beast Wars. Definitely those two. So I would like to see a very, very cool rendition of the Beast Wars Megatron. That would be sweet. So if you notice right here, uh, his back kibble, uh, his backpack, I basically put it in this fashion rather than the way a lot of people have it, where they separated it and lift it up and made it look like more like the Armada Megatron. Um, I just stopped doing that, folks. I, I stopped making him into the Armada Megatron. I stopped pretending that, you know. This is a new, improved version. So the old version had these big old shoulder things. And if you look side to side, he couldn't see anything. It didn't make any sense. This is an improvement. He doesn't have that problem. Uh, the gun, the fusion gun, is not on his hip. It's on his arm as it should be with Megatron. That's an improvement. 
his head sculpt, I, I really like the way it looks to me. It's an improvement. So I'm treating this guy as an improvement rather than forcing him to be something that he's not. I mean, regardless of the way he is this way, or if you decide to put this on his hip and open this up and stuff, he's still Armada Megatron, period. So I don't need to do those things. Now, I understand that if you have the G1 version of this and you're going to display them side by side, and you kind of need to make him look more different, if not because they're pretty much the same figure. You're, you're doing that to make him look more different than the other version. Then I understand. With that one, the G1 version, you probably have the thicker side of the cannon down here. And then with this one, you could even put this like on his hip. And you could separate these two and, and stack them up you know, to where they're, they're high up here like that. You know, So I, I understand you can do that. But... Um, for me, this is the only one I have, and I don't plan to get the G1 version. Uh, I could display him however I want, so this is really, really cool for me. Now, right here, uh, once again, I really like that you could put the um, uh, Minicons on there. So right here, I have this uh, this uh, boat Minicon, and he has the pressure missile that, that you press on, and, and it fires. It's not spring-loaded. Um, these boat ones, they're actually pretty cool. This this set, it came with three different boats. I just don't really care for the brown color. But, uh, yeah, these these were actually pretty cool. They, they were pretty sweet. And then over here, uh, <laughs> you can see that he has a wolf attached to to him right here. Minicon. This uh, Overbite is the name of this uh, black wolf. And I really, really like the way it looks. It kind of like a, a, a Ravage. If, if you will, from Soundwave, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, so I, I just put him on there, and then here is Megatron holding Megatron. Uh, this is actually a Target Master. Um, it was, I think it was released as a Micron over in Japan. It's a capsule toy, actually, and uh, yeah, he it's pretty cool, because he can be used as a, a Minicon, and uh, he can also be used as a Target Master. The only problem is his uh, face is really maybe perhaps a little too small. But, you know, a lot of the Minicons have that problem where the face is a little too small and the detail kind of suffers. But, uh, yeah, overall, he's pretty interesting. Um, I can't say that I super recommend it or anything. It's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but, yeah, I thought it'd be cool to have Megatron holding Megatron and you know Megatron as a gun is is always cool um, yeah I, ju I just wish that they're able to do that again hopefully they will they'll they'll make a cool Megatron like this that he could actually transform into a gun and and to avoid all kinds of problems just make it into a Cybertronian gun you know then then you could avoid all the legal issues and stuff like that a laser gun that, that'd be fine kind of like shockwave in fact maybe they could do the same thing that they did here where the only difference really is the paint and the head sculpt, but gun-wise, they're pretty much the same. I, I wouldn't be against that, you know, and, and same size, leader class size like this from Generations with this kind of detail and relatively simple to transform. That would be so sweet. So anyway, uh, you know, I just wanted to talk about this figure because this is one of the, the toys that I've picked up recently fairly recently that it's just been very very satisfying there's been some other ones that I picked up that have been completely unsatisfying uh, thank you for watching and take care folks